Thanks, Senator Wicker. I know the chair is delighted to see me breathlessly come into the room here after everybody else had supposedly finished. We, we've had problems with scheduling today, as you might imagine. Uh, and I understand there have been questions about the map and about the challenge process, about the fact that there uh, is additional time, but that a lot of us are still, uh, we still don't have a comfort level that this is going to get the, the right information to the uh, decision makers with regard to this mobility uh, fund. Um, and so let me follow up on that to Mr. S uh, Spellmeyer. Um, will, will we be able to challenge all geographic areas presumed to lack unsubsidized 4G LTE service within the allotted time that's now been extended? And, and why is it so important to get the map right before the uh, Mobility Fund Phase Two auction begins? Uh, Senator, we absolutely will not be able to get to all of the areas that we'd like to get to. Uh, I talked in my testimony, uh, you know, we've taken 16 million readings, we've spent $2 million doing so, and we've only gotten to 3% of our ETC footprint. And there's a whole lot more places we need to go. I've got 20 drive test teams in the field in uh, a dozen states right now, and we're going as fast as we can, but we're going to run out of time uh, before we get to the end of the extended challenge process. It's crucial to get it right because, you know, th these, these maps are just wildly inaccurate in a number of states, and we're going to lock those states into the state they are today, the condition they are today for the next 10 years, and it's going to be 2030 before we can go back and bring some of these places up to 5 megabits per second at a time when, by then, 5G will be running around urban areas at a gigabit a second, and it's just, it's going to crack open a digital divide that's far worse than what we've seen previously when people in, in, in urban areas have, uh, you know, self-driving cars and remote health care, and, and, and we're going to be lacking the kind of precision agriculture and all those other benefits that we need in rural areas. That's certainly the apprehension that I have, and I think a lot of members of, of Congress have. Um, do you have any legislative steps that you would like to, to suggest to the members of this committee to address this problem? So, so Senator, I think I think the FCC has all the tools they need to get this right. They, there just hasn't been enough time and, a, and attention devoted to it. Uh, I, I, certainly, I, I would urge but, but, Congress but what to... If they're con what if they're not convinced that those well, steps they, need to be they, taken? They, they, uh, I would like to see the, the FCC directed to, to stand down, and if they're not willing to fix it, that we give it to NTIA. Uh, Administrator Reddell has talked about doing so. There, there, there are ways to do this and to do it in a relatively efficient time frame uh, so that we, we get this right. I, I think the FCC's tried. I don't mean to be overly critical today, but and this is it's challenging, uh, but we can, we can do better than what we have. Thank you, and I agree. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman.